Okay. Hello, everyone. I would like to make uh, one request. It's that if you, t if you have taken pictures today, that you can uh, share them on Wiki Commons. So, uh, so on uh, Wikimedia, the website of, uh, of uh, the same guys behind Wikipedia, you can, um, you can upload your, uh, your uh, uh, images there. And uh, Romain, I'm, I'm missing Romain. Where's Romain? No? OK, just Google for, uh, for Wiki Commons. Uh, and um, you will be able to, to upload your uh, pictures there. Share them with uh, Open Belgium 18. So, who knew that today was actually that today was actually the 29th birthday of the web? Many people actually knew, nice, but it wasn't mentioned before. So, the 12th of March today, in, in 1989. There was Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the web, that actually invented this very thing. So, um, back uh, uh, today, he, he wrote an opinion piece on, on, uh, with his uh, NGO, the Web Foundation, where he actually said, the web is under threat. We are not doing a good job with, with the web. And we need to do a couple of things uh, about this. And I think this is very close to what we are doing as well with Open Knowledge Belgium. The first thing that we actually need to do is to close the digital divide. We need everyone to have equal access to the web, to the web or the internet. And today, and I want to ask you, uh, uh, dear people of the audience, net neutrality. Who knows what net neutrality means? Yes? Good. Come on, no, leave them up, leave them up. Yes, this is a game that we're playing, yes. So, okay, majority knows what net neutrality is. And now, who is in favor of net neutrality? Good. I saw none of the hands actually going down. That means that the people in this audience actually have a very high rate of believing in the same thing. Yet, that, that, that is not true for everyone. It's not true for, for everyone across entire of Belgium. And that's a problem. We need to fight for net neutrality. We need to fight for the web as it is, because it's, uh, uh, there, there's a threat that it's going to disappear if we are not going to uh, uh, tell us what, what's, uh, what's, uh, what's bothering us. So we as a community, we, the audience of Open Belgium, we need to make statements. The second thing is that, that he said, make the web work for people, not only for big companies. And, and, and let's not uh, make, make big companies just uh, centralize everything in, 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 in one system. But um, yeah, let, let's, let's make sure that everyone can, can harness the power of the web to, 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 make, yeah, to, to, to make something useful for, for, uh, for him or herself. And how can we do that? Well, I think that, that, that governmental organizations and people who actually publish raw data have a lot to say in that. Because today, even if we, if we publish data about, uh, um, for instance, about public transport, if we publish data about public transport today, then yeah, the, the, the first thing that happened with, with SNCB, for instance, it, it was not um, SNCB it now shares their data for, for, for developers. No, it was Google, Google Maps now adopts the data of SNCB. This was the headline in the, in the newspapers. That's a, that's a big problem. Because, um, yeah, I will, ooh la, the web is, is, is uh, I will ignore the fact that the web, yeah, but no. Yeah. So, um, uh, so, so, so if, if Google Maps is the only one who will be able to actually put in the investments to, 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 uh, to use this data and to make, to make useful uh, things with it, then we have a problem again. So we also need to publish this data better. And I think uh, I saw someone from, from STIP today who I was really happy to meet that said, we are going to put in the effort to, to publish better uh, open data in the future. And that's really, that's really key, uh, that, uh, something that we really need to do. We don't, we don't need to only publish open data, we actually need to do it better so that it actually creates power for the many and not only the few. And um, I have another question for you. Who believes actually that meteorological data should be open and free to use. That's great, almost 100% success rate. We all believe that just the weather, data about the weather, that should be freely available. Yet if we look at our own meteorological institute of, of Belgium, 
and we look at the open data page, it hasn't been updated since uh, 2016, and I actually said, this work of creating this open data portal tool will last until 2016. And the data on there, there are, there's some really interesting data on there, but it was only part of a small project, which the project ha really has its merits. But um, it's too bad that this is just not funded anymore. How come this is not funded anymore? I believe this, this is our fault. This is on us. We didn't make enough noise about the fact that this was a really good step. This was a really good step of, of, of our meteorological institute to, to, to do open data. And we really needed to, to, we really need as open data advocates to, to show that's a good example and to make sure that it's going to get, uh, keep getting funded. And um, what we are doing as, as, uh, as Open Belgium and as Open Knowledge Belgium, I think it's also working because uh, only today there was already uh, uh, Ryan Heath, a very uh, uh, popular journalist, uh, that, that actually retweeted uh, a tweet from Ton saying that, hey, look, there's, there's now this, this tool that you can use to, to actually use open data. And then there's Els Ampe that, that, that shouted out to, to Stip. I don't know whether it's, it's correct or not, but she shouted out that uh, Stip should go for, uh, for, for better open data. So also uh, politicians and journalists are now uh, on the same page with us. So we are actually creating this, this world where knowledge creates power for the many and not the few. And that's really where, where, uh, where we need to uh, be heading at. And uh, of course, as, as any NGO, as, as any uh, organization that, that, that believes that, that we are on the right side of history, if something is working, let's do it. Let's do more of that and let's do it with more people. So that's what we really uh, need to try to do with you in the audience. We need you to start advocating open data as well. And we can only learn from the best. I have uh, three people from, from the board of directors of, uh, of uh, Open Knowledge Belgium that I would like to invite on stage. So, uh, Ton, Gwen, and Timo, please join us on stage. Um, they, they are open, open data advocates from, from the... Yeah, please, yeah. They are open uh, data advocates from the, yeah, from the first hour. When, when, when it wasn't cool yet, these guys were actually doing it. And now it's cool and now they're still doing it. And now they're inviting you to, to, to do it as well. Um, uh, but um, uh, let, let me ask, in fact, a, a first question to, uh, uh, to Ton. Ton, do you think like now, in, in, uh, when, when you've seen Open Belgium today, do you think we have the right meat, how do you say that, the meat in the bowl or uh, vlees in the cup or the, the, do you think we have the right people to, to, to start? To, to, to I feel like I'm in, oh, sound, sound, yeah, I feel like I'm in so, some sort of nightclub where the people, like you have like, I definitely think we have the right meat in the bowl, if that is a saying or a fighting pit, like, okay, and we, we're not going to, we don't plan to fight here. Uh, but yes, I think if I look at the people that attended today and the discussions we had here in real life, online, and the people following the video stream, it's really impressive in a few years how I think that this idea of open data, which was new, which we had to explain a few years ago, has become something the people in this room take as a given. And that we are now asking for a lot more stuff in many of the work groups. Uh, I heard the same thing. How can it be that this set that was publicly funded is not open? This was going from energy data over um, uh, sea uh, bottom level data to many exciting other data sets which we were not fighting for years ago. So yes, I think it shows that we have greatly advanced um, the knowledge about open data and uh, the need for more open knowledge in general. Uh, what, what what kind of uh, data are you you yourself working on? Is that is that like in the in the is that over any kind of domain, is, or is it something specific? So myself, I'm uh, as you know the, the the board members that sit here in front of you, we're all volunteers, unpaid. We did this on the side of our day job, and many of our day jobs are linked to what we are telling here. So we try to practice what we preach. Uh, and I make my living with two startups. The first one is data, which is opening business data. And the second one is Lex.be, which is opening legal data. So often we had to go in the early days to scrape the data. Now and now, these data more and more are published in structured data sets. But the value of structuring the unstructured was already bringing enough value for us to live off. And those are small SMB companies with a handful of people working there full time. So, and do you think this, this, this cleaning data business will still exist for a long time? Um, I hope it, I actually hope it, this is a strange thing. 
but I hope that uh, it will, it w the government will disrupt us. So I hope there will no longer be a need for what my company did a few years ago and is doing today, and that we can all extract higher value, that the base data sets will, will, will have a higher quality, and that if you want to sell something on there, it's going to be insights that you have used uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or human power to bring new insights on top of existing data sets. But right now, we're still doing a lot of the low-hanging quality control, finding links, finding entities between those data sets that are pretty messy and unstructured up to this day. Okay, I think I've, I've seen a lot of people working on linked data here and, and, and things that might disrupt your business and I actually hope that it, it, it will. If, it, if it's not going to, to do that, then I'm, I think we will only leave the, 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 the power of data to, 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 this, to, the, to a couple of companies, just like, uh, yeah, your company, but uh, yeah. Good, Gwen, um, you're, you're the open science advocate, right? Yes. Does this work? Okay. Yes, you have to hold yeah, it really you can close. Say so. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so what does that mean? Open science is that not the same as open data, or? Uh, open data is part of open science. Um, yeah, as most of you know, I think uh, the the whole open movement and, and scientific research, and to be clear, with scientific research, we mean everything from humanities to social sciences to STEM. Um, it started up with, with the call for uh, opening up access to publications. Mm. So that's what, how it started like 15 to 15 years ago. Um, people getting very frustrated by the fact that their publications uh, are locked behind a paywall and um, basically that you have to pay to get access to research that's being funded by public means. Mm. So, um, but it's interesting, I think like since the seven years, six, seven years that I've been working, there's been a, a very, um, first a very gradual, but now like a very firm shift towards to not only have publications, to not only open up publications, but um, to open up underlying data sets, but um, the sort of data underlying the publications, but also uh, to consider data science as like a, like a, full, uh, a full part of scientific research. I think there are more and more researchers now actually not publishing papers anymore but just working on data sets. And that comes with certain, um, I would say, institutional hurdles that, in that as in the largest part of the world, at least in Western, Western Europe, and um, your academic career depends on the number of publications you publish. And uh, that leaves more and more people who are actually conducting science but who do not get the, uh, the publications anymore. Um, so, so far I have heard about a lot of open domains and, and in no, not one case it was simple. It was always like part of like a really entangled structure and that's what you're probably referring to as well, like, like the, 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 yeah. Yes, it's, 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 it's one, and, and, and I mean every day I hear about like you have open notebook science, you have open lab science, you have um, also in humanities, uh, I think for those who were this morning in the, the, the humanities, uh, the such Demi, there, there's plenty of very interesting uh, data mining, text and data mining, super interesting stuff being done. Um, and it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to do that kind of stuff if you're not working in the open. Um, there's um, uh, somebody, there's a sticker on my laptop that just said like, uh, science that is closed is not good science, or, or closed science is bad science, and I think we're more and more the, um, yeah, going into that direction. Okay, good. So, so if, the, uh, if now in the audience there, there would be someone kicking off a new domain, for instance, about uh, open data about the sea, um, would, what, what, um, <laughs> what? Later, you can ask it at the reception. Uh, but uh, uh, Gwen, what, what kind of hint would you give to him? Like, like, would you have a tip for him? Like, like did in open science, did something go really well? I would, I would just say like use your common sense. Like make sure, um, there's been a lot of talk about FAIR in, in data and, and you know, like you can, you can transpose this to other domains as well. Like it's findable, make, make whatever you do, whether it's data, whether it's a publication, whether it's, it's notes that you make, make, make it findable, make, make it accessible. Make it, if possible, interoperable so that other people can, can, can uh, yeah, interact with whatever you're doing and make it reusable as well. Um, is there's, I think, I would say the time of silos and science is over. It's not true. There's still silos, but I think we're heading towards, uh, towards the direction where, where there's uh, this whole network of interconnected domains and, 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 and especially with all the international projects, like people are 
you cannot really work on an international scientific project anymore if you decide to keep all your data on a USB stick in your drawer, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so Timo, that moves us to the to the last domain of this 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 panel, at least. And that's uh, you. You've been you've been worked so so it's business academics and now you've actually worked on on open data from inside government how did that go was that exciting Ex uh, exciting it was uh, um, honestly uh, peter i when i started my job at the city of ghent uh, they told me you would be working on open data and i was scared as hell because i was just a low level clerk in a government organization which power do i have to open up data, that was the question that I had. And um, if I look in the room now, because you were actually, you were blaming the audience for not being advocates, right? Uh, you're right at some point, but at least one in four people in this room, and I'm not exaggerating, have been instrumental in the open data program in Ghent. So honestly, you've been doing my work, and the reason I had the power to convince people at the city administration to open up data was thanks to you guys, so thank you. Right, honestly, Peter was... <laughs> the reason we have open data in Ghent, and I hope I can say we're trying to do it well, was because Peter asked our mayor, hi, Mr. Termont, would you do open data? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> I wonder if I, if I would have asked a different question, whether he would have said the same thing. But, uh... <laughs> So honestly, community is very important, right? We really need to stand together and continue advocating. So only one in four people has helped me. The other three should start doing their job. <laughs> Good, and on that note, I want to thank my, uh, my panelists, Timo, Gwen, and Ton. And um, now for the, for the final bit before uh, we, we, uh, we start the reception. Uh, or some already have started? No, no, no. They, they How much pay? Because uh, it wouldn't have worked without you. <laughs> Would like to thank. I would like to thank Mathieu, Christophe, Bob. Toon, Raf, Ben, Gwen, Bert, Niels, Thomas, Romain, Mutwakil, Carlo, um, I cannot read my own handwriting anymore, uh, Manon, Manuel, Katia, Nico, Jo, Tor, Mustafa, and Damien. So give these people a warm applause. Thank you very much. Without you guys, this would have never, never worked out. So, uh, also thank you for all the last-minute work we've, we've been, uh, you've been putting in. There were some problems with uh, with the Beamer, Bob. You, you've you've done incredible job. In, in uh, you, your stress level must have been no. Okay, then then okay, then forget what about what, what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you Good. now, Peter, because you're forgetting somebody crucial on stage. I, Julia, I, this I is the moment someone? where we <laughs> are going to thank you. Yes. Which flowers? Because what most people haven't seen at this success here today is yours. So a big thanks from us, from our hearts, from the whole board. You must know that we're a small nonprofit organization and Julia pulled this together almost all by herself with very little of our support. So Julia, well done and much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, no, I appreciate it a lot, even though it's not necessarily true without the support of a lot of people. No, really. Um, without these people, this wouldn't be possible. And thank you so much. I agree with Timo. Uh, the community is incredible. And um, thank you for being part of it. Well done to all. Thank you, volunteers. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Bart. And thank you, speakers. And thank the closing you word is for you. Thank you to the partners, of course, yeah, the, 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 the people who actually made sure that we had enough financial means to organize this. Uh, Mirva, Mapbox, Digital Wallonia, Emac, The Greenland, Fixshare, Open Data Shop, Rock Estate, and Tenforce. Thank you very much. And now the... Re the re and next year, we would like to have Proximus again. So forgive <laughs> Peter for making those crucial comments. Often we have the carrot and the stick, yeah? and we tell it as it is, and it's a hard balance to find. But uh, Peter, thank you for taking care of all those partners. Thank you. Yeah.